All right, so I thought I was going to show myself repairing this Hayward TVP TriVac 500. But right now I am admitting defeat with it before I order some parts. So my symptoms were that I had this and it runs normally and there's water that comes out of the tail. And then there's usually this jet shoots water out the back all the time and a secondary jet that occasionally shoots water out the front. Both this front and rear jet are set at an angle so that the cleaner does not get stuck in one place in your pool. And then there's also this whip tail that connects onto the back here, um, which moves around and helps resist that as well. The only information I had found online about this um, said to adjust my whip tail if I was having problems, but that was not my cause. So my symptom was a couple days ago, this started continuously always shooting out the front and the back, and so it would kind of spin in place and remain stuck. Turned it off, figured I'd look at it in a few more days, and when I went back, a couple days later and turned on my pumps and ran it again. It was only shooting out the back, which also got it dug into corners. So I started taking things apart to see how bad it could be. So I did not take any footage along that process, but we can kind of step back and review how I got there. So normally this top cap is resting on top of the unit. Underneath here, there's one, two screws, bolts, that will allow this to hinge. On the back, you can see right here, the tab, and here, there's a tab. They go into these hinge points on the lid, so that the lid can lift up and out of the way. When you do that, these roller wheels that are usually here on the edge as bumpers uh, will likely just fall away. There's nothing retaining these in place other than the screw that was, bolt that was under here and under here, they kept the lid on. Those kind of pinch these all into place as they go along. Once the top of the unit is off, you can get to this and this is the timing and valving unit. And this is what I actually have my problem with. So this is my pressure supply line that runs from an assistant pump in the pool, flushes water into here. You can see on the back of it, there's water that will always go out the tail. Um, and then the water comes forward in the pump. And there is a timing unit. And that timing unit here pushes water out to, this is the front hose. Um, as well as through this would normally be on the front here. This is the rear hose. This line runs over to the unit here, a little box like this, that is the timing unit. And I'll open that up in just a moment to show it. And then right here, these are the jets that run from underneath the unit. And you get their water from the bottom here this comes and turns it and shoves it there and these are always spraying the water straight up so if you've just taken the top off of your unit then one of the first things that I like to do is get this out of the way so this is just the event stack I don't know if the correct word for it and this goes from there up and out the top of your unit so that it can flush any debris into right here, which is where your bag attaches your float bag, uh, like this. You can see there's a little tiny tail here, and it goes under that piece of styrofoam. I did not remove the styrofoam block to get this out because I didn't have a Phillips head out yet. Um, I probably will remove that to get it back in. I think it's easier to manipulate that way. So with that out of the way, the very front of the unit that you see is this piece. Um, and this piece is the chamber that redirects water 
from where it's coming in, and then it goes to this other hose that is your sprayer out the rear. Um, almost everything, yes, everything I've done so far comes out with Phillips head. Um, this one can be detached from the front. And the piece that it is affixed to is this. So there's two gaskets in here, or a single gasket with two par parts. And um, it joins there. In my case, the gasket's perfectly fine. It's made for water and it's been underwater, so no worries there. I need to step back a moment to get that out on the front of the unit. Pending the length of the screwdriver you're using, you may need to undo these two tabs here and hold the main unit in, as well as I believe there was one here and here so that you can have free play with this unit to be able to get your screwdriver accessing. Um, naturally, when you're going in, check your hoses and everything. Um, I ran the unit with the lid off. You will get sprayed because with the lid either hinged back or off, water will go crazy. Um, but I did that so that I could see if any of these small pieces of plastic were cracked. Because in my case, I got this unit uh, with the home that I purchased. It was already in the pool here. And so I have no idea of its age, and I wasn't sure if my failure was related to cracks or something like that. So, with this front off, the next piece <clears throat> is this little valve tool component with a flapper. And this controls whether or not the device, so this is normally right here, whether or not this device is diverting water out of the front. And that's why it has the timer because it does not spray out the front full time. So you can see that the way that it controls that is by toggling this back and forth. You can see mine's kind of worn because it's not toggling nicely. The tooth that you see here when lifted up allows water to divert into the front sprayer. This tab gets bitten into from right here. There is this piece and as the timer turns this comes around and you can see there's the tab that catches and then it releases. You have an entire rotation of this timing unit again before it catches again. So what that timing unit will do is it will catch and lift that just briefly and then come around and turn it back off and come around and repeat. I almost stopped when I had just gotten to this point because in looking at this soft plastic there is a wear groove in there just on the edge, you can see the point of it right there, on the up ramp, as well as a wear groove. You can kind of tell a little bit of curvature of on the down ramp. So I thought that perhaps that was binding up, uh, because again, my gaskets were good everywhere. But while I already had the unit apart, I wanted to look further. So to clarify, this comes into the back of this unit and this gets spun. So that brings me to what it gets spun by. And it gets spun by this, which I believe on the parts list they call a timing pack, timing kit. So this piece fits into here. Those are what's bolted onto the back of here. So with this off, you can see it very simply keys into there, and that should spin. Um, you'll notice mine does not. I'll get to use that in just a minute. So 
taking the faceplate of this off, um, mine had a little bit of wear in here. Uh, again, no, the, the device is the bushing in and of itself. You can see it's scratched up in there, it's just worn. So that faceplate off. And then when I'm here, this should spin easily. The rod fell when I opened it. And it still is locked. So this is another piece that has worn. You can see the roughness around there. And if you look at it against a straight edge, that this wheel has worn itself away on this. And again, I don't know the age of this, um, but it's a pretty reasonable part to have worn. Um, so this gear, um, and there's a protective plate here. Take that. And then there's a series of all the same gears, so you don't have to be too worried with taking them out. Um, they are all the same amount of teeth, same center, everything. With all of these parts, if I can get a focus, yeah, there we go. Uh, you can see there's just there's just scratchiness and wear there, um, as well as you can see that there are stamps on here. Like this one is a CV4. Let me look at my eyes. Seven thousand two um, part number, and I kept taking this piece apart and reassembling it and trying to figure out why. I could not spin. Um, I understood that the wear on here would provide some resistance, but even with that front plate off, couldn't spin the gears. And finally I realized if you look at this one, um, you can see it almost looks like it's got a second part, this little rim around the top with the split in it. And comparing that gear, which is the same part number as this gear, see that the second one closer to the right has just completely worn away on the middle um, nothing is broken away there's not a separate part there it's just plastic that's spun without any lubrication for years and I believe that that is causing the gears to not mesh correctly and is providing along with all the other little bits of wear and resistance, um, sufficient resistance that the timer cannot spin. So, let's look at the actual timing. So, there's your two pins. Left one is longer than the right one. Oop, as I drop this. And we take this plate off. Inside of this plate, I also have another point of wear. Um, here where this metal pin, my impression was that these pins should not uh, move, that the wheels should just move around the pin. And um, again, you can see how sloppy in the center of the gear um, that gear is as compared to this other one I was comparing it to where the fit is much tighter still. So in the bottom of this timing unit, there's a lot of play where the base of this is. It doesn't give it resistance to spinning, but you can see it's very sloppy. Um, and that's not just manufacturing slop, because the front here of these pin units is you know, made by the same company and tooling, but is much tighter. Um, I'm not sure why the discoloration there. I don't have anything that was rusting or anything like that. Um, but that has also gotten wear. You can also see on the top of where the gear sits has gotten rough along here. And one of these, whichever one was the original um, bottom stack gear, shows the same wear underneath where it's worn away. Again, just from plastic rubbing on itself. Behind this is the wheel. And this wheel and the initial starting gear, uh, this barb 
fits into the hose here so that it's always getting water from the supply. And that hose will go into here and flush water through to spin this gear, um, which then in sequence does all the rest of the gears until we reach up to the one with the key in it. it should spin the next part. Um, this wheel, I'm surprised, is not actually more worn given that it's the um, part that should be spinning the most with this whole situation because each other gear is a reducer to slow this whole thing down um, and it has like nowhere at all throughout the center of it um, and then the long pin here again pretty tight fitment no um, slop as was found with this uh, short gear, or short pin So, unfortunately, that's it. I've got worn out parts, and I do not foresee a way to repair them um, such that they would operate well again. The unfortunate part about this is that that means I am going to have to replace this entire unit. Um, not the entire vacuum, um, just this entire timing box because everything else here looks good um, and the timing box includes these plastic portions here. Um, so pretty much everything except for the hosing, the bottom, the wheels, and the body will end up replaced for this unit to function. Um, I was just a little afraid I've never messed with pool cleaners, um, pool vacuums. Um, the only thing that really made me bite in and open this uh, was realizing that these units still sell for five to six hundred dollars and that's a pretty hefty replacement um, whereas this timing and valve unit sells for about a hundred dollars uh, which when you look at the fact that the unit is a couple pieces of hose a body some wheels and that the majority of it is there um, I think that's pretty reasonable to have my working unit again Yeah, I just figured hopefully somebody else looking for a TVP 500 or trying to diagnose why it is uh, getting stuck in corners and not switching gears would like to see that. All right.